Hi everyone, look where we are. Let me see who's joined me this morning. Let me just double check. We've got five minutes before we officially start and then I'll um, kind of explain how the day is going to work. Hi Noel, hi Fliss, how are you going? Hi Tracy, hi Diane, Crystal, Doreen, hi Anne, hi Dawn, Cheryl, Catherine, Derek and Amy, hi Dee, hi Leslie, Dana, Hadrian, Ava and Michael. I noticed there was one person here, Leslie, I think from uh, Australia. This is the Southern Aurora, look at this. I'm just going to back up and have a look at this one but we're uh, standing in the sheds and there's trains surrounding us and here look look at this beastie the amazing southern aurora um, let me tell you a little bit about it and there's some information boards here as well uh, so it says until April 62, if you wanted to travel from Sydney to Melbourne, you had to change at Albury. And I think that's because the gauges were different. The, um, there were different um, widths between the tracks all over the country, no consistency. So when building a railway system across the country, it makes sense to have the measurement between the rails the same to simplify transport across the borders. Um, so yes, what is gauge? It was all about the gauge. So the Southern Aurora... Uh, in 1962 was able to go from Sydney to Melbourne. So who else has joined us? Hi Michael, Katie, Alison, hi Virginia, hi Heather, hi Gregory, Lorene, hi Mindy. Oh, I'm going to have trouble with your name. Is it Jadariel? And, and apologies if I've got that wrong. Dave, Pauline, hi Rhonda. And good morning, Susanna. Hi, Kerry. And uh, yes, was anyone here on my tour yesterday? I couldn't see the chat. The chat just uh, totally cut out on me, so I wasn't able to, well, I was able to talk to you, but I couldn't see what you were saying back at me. <laughs> you could have said anything you liked. I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have been any the wiser. <laughs> But I did read back through it later, and thank you so much for all your support. Uh, it, was, it was lovely to go back and read the comments later. <laughs> Hi, Tariq and the bears. So I'm just going to have a quick wander around. We've got half an hour before we need to board the train that we're going to ride today. Oh, I've just seen something interesting. What's this one here? You worked on the spirit of progress, Susanna. Let's go back and have a look. Let's see. Spirit of Progress, that's this one here, look. There you go. I did, that's exactly how I felt, Dawn. I felt like I was talking to myself. <laughs> it took me back to all those, to the very beginning when I was practicing before I was uh, accepted as a tour guide. And... Uh, <laughs> and doing those practice tours just talking to the camera with no one on the other end it's so comforting to have someone there on the other end to talk to i just love that you're all there look inside this one i'm just trying to find out what this one is we've got this beautiful glass work on the door here and i'm getting the reflection on that which is unfortunate but i'm trying to figure out what those flowers are could be waratahs in the glass work in the etched glass work and then here we are looking inside one of the cabins, one of the sleepers. That looks like, would that be a double in there? I'm guessing it possibly is. All right, it's ticked over time. So it's now 10.30 in Thirlmere, which is just outside Picton. Let me turn this around. Good morning, everyone. My name's Lynn. For anyone who hasn't met me before, I normally do tours in the Blue Mountains, which is to the west of Sydney. But today we've come down to a town called Thirlmere, a small town outside of Picton to the southwest of Sydney, to the New South Wales State Railway Museum, which is the largest collection, home to the largest collection of rolling stock in Australia. So I'm really excited to be able to bring you all these wonderful trains. I don't know an awful lot about them, so feel free to chime in and add to the conversation. Uh, Susanna, you asked what the temperature's like. It's gonna be really warm today. It's very humid. 
Um, but before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that we meet today on the traditional lands of the Dorog Nation and pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. All right, let's just turn this around. So at 11 o'clock, half an hour from now, we need to make our way to the platform to board the train. Nice warm day, short sleeves. Yes, exactly. Just try and catch up on some of the comments before we move on. So I'm standing in front of the 3820 here, which looks like it was a big old thing. Look at the big beast there. That's the technical term, big train. <laughs> as I said, if anyone has any knowledge of these trains as we have a look around, feel free to chime in. I'll just go give you headlines. I'm not... if. If you want to take photos, postcards of the actual plaques, please go ahead. But it basically says of the 3820, rocket of the rails, last work of steam art, evoking beauty, speed and reliability, the C38 class were powerful in their economic engines. Now I'm admiring this lovely thing. Look at the woodwork, the panel work. And imagine this is a little bit different to uh, the way we get around these days, isn't it? although I suspect that even back in the day I might not have qualified to sit in this carriage. <laughs> and this one here is the state governor's car. So the state governor of New South Wales presided over the opening of the original Sydney to Parramatta Railway in 1855, and this was, this was what he used to get abound in. And we can see on this uh, reconstructed platform, we've got the old luggage wagons. And this is the old sleeping car, I guess, that the, the less privileged might have used. Although it's very dark, I'm not sure I can really see inside there. You can see that there's leather seats, not much else. Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a bed, there's a cabin. Old wooden carriage, needs a bit of love. They've got quite a lot of trains here, so they really don't, I guess, have the money to restore all of them. We can see through there, you get an idea of the extent of the collection. And I'm just trying to see if there's a way for me to go out and circle around as we uh, look around here. Thanks for the follow, Dee. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Poppy. Did I miss anybody? Hi, Katie and Corinne. Storm, hello there. Good morning. And Faith, Laurie. Thank you so much, Anne. Expected to reach 35 today. Off to the movies later. Yeah, that's a good, nice air-conditioned place to be. Um, so many technical terms you can't keep up. <laughs> Big train? Yes. <laughs> all right. So I'm um, just trying to see. So they're not all lit up either. And I'm giving you the, like the back end of the tour first of all and then we'll get up the front where all the, the prestige stock is. So this one is called Phoenix. Oh, it's not called the Phoenix. It just says from ashes, a new carriage. <laughs> so this one's been dressed up. You can see how it's been done up compared to the one behind it. There's, uh, it's been restored. All right, let's go down here and I'll circle back around and head back towards the main main collection. And uh, we've already seen the steam train. It's already uh, in action, getting warmed up for us to, to board at 11.15. So we'll be making our way up to the platform at 11 and boarding at 11.15. I want to know what this is though. What is this? It looks like a combi van. What is that? It's very cute, whatever it is. Oh, Susanna, your dad drove one of those? I may not get all your messages um, if there's a lot of conversation, but I'll try. All right, I'm going to peek in through the window. There's a little step that I can climb up on. One of the oddest little items in the collection is this rail pay bus. Where did it operate? It's a really interesting looking beastie, isn't it? Let's have a look. I'll get up on this, uh, get up on this step and see if I can see in. 
It definitely looks like a combi van. It just looks like a camper van in there. Very cool. All right. Let's go this way. Oh, there's, lucky there's arrows painted on the ground. You could easily get lost in here, I reckon. Just before we head back that way, what have we got up here? Hi, Corinne. Uh, I just want to find out what this one is here. Hi, Joy. It's a rather lovely looking. Here we go. Australian Iron and Steel Limited. The Bronze Wing. And it's dedicated to the memory of an engine man, Don Drysdale, it says. Now don't climb on it. No, I won't. <laughs> so this uh, operated in Port Kimberley, which was the steel town, iron and steel town. And there's the inside of the engine. And then up here we have a couple more engines just before I head back towards the main building. What's this one? Number 79, the saddle tank. No job too big. Imported during 1938, it became part of the extensive project to rebuild and upgrade Port Kembla's shipping and berthing facilities. Okay, so that's, that's what it was pulling behind it. And then this old thing looks like a bit of a beast, doesn't it? Look at that. And this one is an American diesel, 7921, US Army conscript. During 1943, the Australian War Cabinet approached the United States Army to provide diesel electric locomotives to work the new munitions factory near St. Mary's. St. Mary's is down my way, near Penrith just at the foot of the Blue Mountains. And there was an, um, a defence site there until very recently, which has now gone under for housing. Tough mudder, yeah, I think you're right, Rhonda. Oh, what did I miss? What are you daring, Kate, to do, Fliss? I feel like this is the naughty girl's corner. Hi, Mary Lou, how are you this morning? And anyone who I've missed who jumped on the chat when it was moving a little bit quickly, good morning. Thanks for joining this morning. And uh, we're having fun with trains. Here's this little thing again. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, definitely. I'd love to do the um, Indian Pacific, but it's a little bit expensive. Thanks for the follow, Heather. It does. That. Exactly. It looks like a VW camper van. Exactly right. Or possibly with the shape of that front end, even a Citroen. All right, so here we go back through. They reckon there's 100 um, individual items of rolling stock in this big shed here. So obviously this one is uh, belongs to Shell and has something to do with fuel. I've done a couple of long trips through India, Fliss, and while it wasn't very comfortable, it was definitely a great way to see the country. Um, did we pass this engine before? I think we may have. Please don't climb. Is this a dare? 